Well, hello. Let me welcome you again to our daily meditation. I'm so glad that you're joining with us. This is Thursday. Before we move into our time of meditation, let me just make a couple of announcements and reminders to you. Um, you're watching this on YouTube. If you would scroll down or if you can already see the red button that says subscribe on the page and you haven't yet, I encourage you to do that. Just click that button. Um, and by doing that, you'll get automatic notices from YouTube every time we we post a, a new video so that you don't miss out on any of the things that we're trying to provide and make available to you and your family. You'll also notice there's a little share button. And that's a wonderful way to just share with um, other folks on on social media the, with the good news that we're sharing and, and uh, bringing to you each and every, in this case, and each and every day. And then from week to week as we move forward. Do you also notice below that there's a section for comments. It's a wonderful way to just add some a note of encouragement or appreciation or or um, something positive maybe about the message or um, just something um, you, you'd like to say to encourage one another because then as those comments collect everybody who watches can read them and be encouraged and inspired by them. Um, and then let me also remind you that starting today and through Friday or through Saturday, actually, um, if you have opportunity or would like to venture out or need to get out of the house for a short time, you can go to um, the property, the church property and out on the big field spaced out. There will be very, a few stations of the cross. Um, there'll be a number of different stations there. They'll be obvious that you go to just for a time of, of meditation. Each station represents some part or some facet of Jesus' um, journey and experience um, through his crucifixion and resurrection. So I encourage you as a family to do that. Now take your phones because there'll be instructions at each station along with some readings there. There'll be instructions where you can um, go to your, your phone and find audio links that'll give you some inspiration and some instruction and some um, scripture about that station and, and help lead you in your prayer time and meditation time. So I hope you take advantage of that. Um, you can just go whenever it's, it's going to be out in the field for Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, and maybe tell others about it. That may be something that um, others uh, that you know would, would enjoy, even if they're not a part of, of Christian Assembly. We'd love for them to come and enjoy that time of meditation as well. And I'd, I'd love to hear from you. Um, if, if you do email, um, I do email and all you have to do is, is send me some contact at Tori, T-O-R-R-Y at ChristianAssembly.com. I'd love to hear from you. love to hear how you're doing. If there's any special needs that uh, we could be praying for you and your family about, please let us know that. Um, it, it would just be great to, to hear from you because since I can't see people, um, it'd be nice to at least maybe get some some emails from some folks. And then when our meditation time is over, if you'll scroll down in the description part of the page, you'll find the questions and the, and the uh, directions that, that you need for your personal meditation once our time of commenting is, is over. Okay, so enough announcements. That was a lot. Um, our text today is gonna to be Mark 14. Um, if you have your Bibles, you can turn to it. If you don't have your Bibles, you can pause the video and go get them if you'd like to. Uh, it's just two verses um, that that uh, are taken out of the Gospel of Mark. And what we find is Thursday is a big day because it's the day of preparation for Passover. It, Passover is one of Israel's most important feasts and festivals. It is a reminder to them of their history, of their time of bondage and slavery in Egypt. It reminds them of the plagues and specifically the last one, the 10th plague, which ultimately led to their being set free from captivity. It was, it was the plague that um, on that given night, only houses who had the blood of a lamb sprinkled on the doorposts was saved and spared. Other homes, the, the firstborn of every son would die that night. 
And there was tremendous wailing and lamenting all across Egypt on that evening, except the people of God were protected by the blood. And as a result, we find that Pharaoh released the people and they find themselves being set free from bondage and because the death angel passed over them. So this is that celebration in their, in their calendar year and people come to the city from all over the world to join in and be a part of this special time of celebration. Now, in, in during, during that time when Jesus spent Passover, that last Passover with his disciples, it was during that evening that he instituted what we call Holy Communion, the Last Supper, the Lord's Table, the, the Eucharist. Um, and that's what I want to do today together. I, I want to share communion together. I want to gather around the Lord's table, even though we're physically apart. I think that we can still unite together by faith and we can be enriched by sharing communion together. So in, instead of um, me teaching, we're going to, we're going to share communion. Um, in the communion, it, it's important because I, we're reminded that we're still a part of each other. We, we still belong to one another. That faith in Jesus has given us a common union with one another. That the communion of the saints is a powerful thing. When individual members of the body of Christ gather for, for corporate worship, they gather in the name of the Lord for his purposes, powerful things happen. Mighty things happen. We become a spiritual force that none of us are by ourselves individually. And I hope that you're praying along with me for that day and that that day, that day would come sooner when we can again do that. When we can once again fill the auditorium and be physically in the same place with each other. And our communion then will even be richer and sweeter. Now in our text, you'll, find, you'll see that in the morning, on Thursday, Jesus sent a couple of his disciples, I believe it's the Gospel of John, maybe Luke, I think it's John, that tells us it was, it was uh, Peter and John that were sent. And he gave them instructions to go to a certain place and they'd find a man and follow the man and ask the homeowner of the house the man goes into um, to use their guest room to set up for Passover. And they did that and the man gave permission. And so Peter and John are spending their day setting up for Passover that the disciples would gather with Jesus that evening to celebrate. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to send you on that same task. You're not prepared for communion. So I want you to just pause the video and, and find the elements around your house. If you have some um, bread or cracker, get that and get enough for if you're with other people, with your family, get enough for everybody. And then if you, if you have some grape juice or if you have wine or some other kind of juice would be appropriate. Um, I, I guess I would say just, just out of reverence, um, if you don't have those elements right now, that's okay. You can, you can still listen and watch and share, but I would ask you to abstain. Like don't, don't get cookies and milk. <laughs> you don't, don't get last night's stale pizza and, and warm Pepsi. Let, let's, let's hold back from that if, if you wouldn't mind. Um, but hopefully you have some juice around or even, even just water, even just water um, will suffice. So go ahead, stop your video, go get the elements. And when you come back, we'll move into our time of communion together. The Bible says that on the night Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and he took the cup. Both of those elements have great significance for us as Christians. He took bread, common element, um, a staple in their daily diet. And he said, this is my body, take and eat it. The, the, the bread speaks of the humanity of Christ. Remember, Jesus is the Son of God. He was with God because He is God. 
But he laid aside his deity for a time so that he could come to earth, so that he could take on the form of flesh, so that he could become like one of us. The word became flesh. The word of God became the son of God. The living God in heaven came to earth and he became visible and he became tangible. That which we couldn't see, which we couldn't touch, now we could. He became one of us so that he could give his life for us. And in that body, he suffered. He physically suffered. Every day of his life was had its, its own share of difficulties of just living in a fallen world, but he was moving into the next day or two of his final days on earth. And the physical torture that he was going to endure is beyond description. He would physically be abused, he'd be beaten. He, he, he'd have thorns pushed into his skull. He at one point he would be taken out and, and whipped and beaten and his back laid open. He, he suffered physically tremendously and all of that was a part of making that ransom price for our sin that he said he came, that's why he came. The prophet Isaiah foresaw this moment. He said, he'll be wounded for our transgression, bruised for our iniquity. The, chat, the punishment necessary, required for our peace will be accounted to him, will be laid on him and by his stripes will be healed. His body was broken. And in that breaking, he provides healing. In that breaking, he overcomes every physical impairment, every physical challenge that we could face in this life. His broken body makes provision for healing, for wholeness, healing in our soul, of our minds, of our will, of our emotions, healing of our bodies over sickness, over disease, protection and security for us as we follow hard after him. We're in a time of physical vulnerability right now. Even as a nation, we're, we're concerned about a virus. We're concerned about our jobs, about being able to take care of our physical needs just just. Uh, economically, we're concerned about getting the supplies that we need for our homes. We're concerned about perhaps some are just lonely. Some are just in their house by themselves um, and, and they're just lonely. His broken body gives healing and strength and, and help for every physical challenge that we could come, about, come upon. So as you take the bread, hold the bread in your hand. And as you take the bread today, by faith, if there's an area of your life you need wholeness, you need healing, you need physical strength, you need physical provision, by faith in the word of God, by faith in the power of his word, receive healing into your life. Let's take the bread. After that, he took the cup and he said, this is the blood of covenant that's going to be poured out for many. Aren't you thankful for the blood of Jesus today? He came to pay the price and to take on himself the punishment that belonged to us. But he came for us to pay the price on our behalf. See, God's holiness demands that sin be punished. And the only acceptable punishment for sin is the shedding of blood. The Bible says without the shedding of blood, there's no remission. There's no forgiveness of sin. And it had to be innocent blood, not just any blood. It had to be blood that was innocent without blemish. In the Old Testament, we find the sacrifice of, of countless numbers of, of lambs and goats and bulls. And the requirement was they had to be without spot or blemish. They had to be innocent. They had to be pure in order for the sacrifice to be accepted so their sin could be covered. And even at that, we find that sacrifice had to be made routinely 
continuously over and over and over again because man at that time was under the law and man couldn't keep the law. So the law continually condemned man for man's violating of the law. So sacrifice had to be made time and time and time again. But then we come now to what Jesus is doing. He's establishing a new covenant and that covenant is being signed by him, by his blood. He becomes the sacrifice lamb. John the Baptist announced him when Jesus came to be baptized. John the Baptist looked at him, knew who he was and said, behold, the lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. He became sin for us. One sacrifice for all men, for all time. Through faith in Christ, the punishment required for our sin. As we call out to him, as we ask him to save our souls, as we ask him to redeem us, as we ask him to forgive us of our sin, something wonderful happens. Not only is our sin covered, our sin is removed. Our sin is removed. We don't have to continually come back offering um, and offering him as a sacrifice on our behalf again. Jesus died once for all time, for all men. And we're recipients of that. Faith in the blood of covenant gives us spiritual life. Just as his crucified body gives us physical life. His, the shedding of his blood gives us spiritual life. You're, you're a new creation in Christ Jesus. And that newness hasn't worn off because perhaps you gave your heart to the Lord years ago. Someone who gave their heart to the Lord more recently isn't newer than you. The new life that he gives us is new every morning. It's new every day. It's continually being transformed and made new by the power of the spirit who resides inside of us each and every day. Every day we, can, we discover as we pursue him more and more levels and dimensions of that, of that newness. And that newness brings freedom. As a new creation, you're free from the things that used to enslave you. You're free from the slavery of sin, free from the bondage of sin, free from the penalty of sin. We've been set free from, from guilt. We've been set free from, from shame. We've been set free from addiction, from pain. We've been set free from everything that used to hold us down. His blood has set us free. By his blood, we're delivered. By his blood, we know liberty. By his blood, everything that at one time perhaps held us captive, those chains have to fall off, all because of the power of his blood. Every destructive thing that sin imposed on us, his blood, the power of his blood, has overcome and provides deliverance for his son, for his daughter. And in their place, we're given rest, we're given peace. We're given joy. We're given acceptance. We're given purpose. We're, we're, we're given um, all the wonderful things that God had in store for us originally when he created us. All the things they lavished on us that sin stole are restored back to us. Every day, those qualities are being produced in us because of the residency of the Holy Spirit who lives in us. So as you take the cup today, by faith, surrender every part of your life to his life. Make that fresh exchange today. Don't hold on to old ways, old things. Don't hold on to old habits, things that, that keep you from a fuller life in Christ. Just receive into every part of your life, his life. What a great trade. You give him your life and in exchange, he gives you his life. Let's take the cup. Let's pray. Father, I pray for my brothers and sisters today. I pray that even now, as we spend these few minutes together, that your word and your presence brings strength to them, brings encouragement to them uplifts their spirit. I pray, Lord, spirit, soul, and body, that they'd be enriched even now in this moment by your might, by your power. I pray you heal every area of their life that needs healing, that needs your touch, O oh God. 
if they're if they're broken or hurting in their body in some fashion, Lord, bring your healing. Just just your divine healing be released in their bodies right now. God, if there's physical need, if if there's concerns about jobs and finances, Lord, would you rush in and meet those needs? Lord, open a way where there doesn't seem to be one. Make provision, even supernaturally, as you've done in the past for your people during this time of, of stress and this time of shortage. Lord, if they need healing in their souls, if their minds are troubled, if their emotions are restless, if their will has a hard time choosing righteousness, Lord, heal them, heal their souls today. And God, I pray that those who have been redeemed by your blood, I pray that you would infuse them now by your Holy Spirit with a one wonderful sense of peace, of joy, of contentment, of satisfaction that only comes from knowing you, that flows out of that inner life that you've given to us. I pray, God, you would cause faith to arise, hope to increase, love to flood into their hearts as they think about you and as your presence fills their, their room. Father, keep every one of them by your grace, by your mercy. And Lord, I pray by the fire of your presence that you would build a shield around them and protect them and their family during this time of challenge. And Lord, we pray again, heal our land. Heal our land, O oh God, so that we can once again come together at your table again only as one. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen and amen. I pray you have a blessed day in our wonderful Savior, Jesus.